you know, it's kind of funny how things have worked out here. We we started with Epicurus, and he gave us a certain view of uh, of, of what death is, or more of a view of how we should regard death, which is not worry about it because it's not something we should ex- we will ever experience. And then uh, what we read after that has either been explicitly or implicitly a rejection of Epicurus, an argument against that view of death. And and this week's reading, uh, J. Glenn Gray's The Idea of Death in Existentialism, specifically mentions uh, Epicurus by name. And in his explanation, interpretation, uh, exposition of the idea of death in some 20th century existentialist thinkers, it is um, a a very non or anti-Epicurean view of death. a more compatible view of death with Epicurus is presented by Glenn Gray in the beginning of his essay when he briefly mentions Spinoza, and basically that death is not real, uh, according to Spinoza. That the notion of non-being, or things going out of existence for Spinoza, in his view of the world, was uh, an impossibility. That, that death was uh, just an, a phenomenal thing, an, an apparent thing, uh, not something that you should dwell on because it had no reality. In writing this exposition of the idea of death and existentialism, Gray wants to resuscitate death as a central topic in philosophy, as something we should worry about. Certainly that was true in last week's reading, Hans Jonas's reading, uh, Burden and Blessing of Mortality. What was Jonas saying there amongst all the things that he was saying? that uh, mortality, the fact that we die and uh, the possibility of death are central facts of our existence uh, as living beings and so mortality and death, if there's a difference between them, uh, need to be taken into account, have to be taken into account in, 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 in your life. There's just no way of getting around it. And you can read this essay as really making the same case to a certain extent that, that and, and an even stronger case if you look at um, the second paragraph on page 114, Gray says, they, meaning these uh, German philosophers, Jaspers, Karl Jaspers, and Martin Heidegger, they assert emphatically that a proper understanding of and right attitude toward death, one's own death, is not only a sine qua non of genuine experience, but also of gaining any illumination about the nature of the world. So this is really very strong statement that one cannot ignore death, that, 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 that is, if you want to understand yourself and you want to understand the world and you want to understand your condition of being in the world, that an awareness of death, an awareness of mortality is an absolute necessity. Uh, so Gray then goes on to say in the next paragraph on page 114, uh, okay, then what meaning and significance can be attached to the fact that man must die? This is similar to what Jonas was doing last week. How should I regard my own death as a future event? What values are to be derived from regarding it at all as contrasted with forgetting about it and living as though death were not real? So, um, two very strong statements there. One, um, that one cannot really, as He'll go on to say later, live in the truth, whatever that means. Hopefully we'll get a better understanding of what the existentialists mean by that. One cannot live in the truth without being aware of death, without thinking about death and trying to understand death and one's own mortality. That you can't understand yourself or the world without thinking about death. And then these questions. Okay, um, if we're going to take death seriously as a topic of philosophical inquiry, then these are the kind of questions we ask. We know, okay, w- what significance is attached to the fact that I know I will die? Um, how should I regard my own death? And and um, w- how is it going to change my life? I mean, is it a different sort of life, living with the awareness of death than being oblivious to death? So, uh, according to Gray, existentialism moves death to the very center of inquiry. After a long time, he says, in which philosophers, you know, for centuries were unconcerned with death. It just just didn't fit in with their philosophical projects, with their philosophical approach. Death comes to the center of things, of our understanding of ourselves and the world. 